Well, welcome back to the channel, Internet. It's a pretty windy, cool day here in North Carolina. But I thought we would get out and discuss a little bit about how we can decide what the right e-bike to buy is. You know, I had someone ask me what kind of e-bike they should buy and <laughs> had to think about that quite a little bit. And, you know, I couldn't tell them. But I'll tell you what I was able to do. I was able to tell them, well, this is what you got to kind of ask yourself and then you can decide. And I can tell you a little bit about what's available to you out there. And, uh... Uh, I think we can zip down over this way here. And so what I did was I come up with a list of, let's see about going up this way maybe. We're just kind of rolling through the fields here. I come up with a, a little bit of a list of questions that you can ask yourself and uh, uh, to help yourself decide, well, this doesn't go up there. It just goes around the pond. Yeah, it doesn't go nowhere. Because I know that other row up there was a dead end. Uh, but uh, you can ask yourself these questions and that'll help you find the answer to what kind of an e-bike you should be getting, what would be appropriate for you. And I guess the first question that you need to ask yourself is, hey, what do I want to do with this e-bike? Do I want to come out there and uh, uh, take it with me to the campgrounds so that I can ride over to the swimming pool or the cafeteria or something like that. You know, is that what I'm going to use it for? Am I going to use it for getting myself in shape? Am I looking for that? Am I going to use it for going back and forth to work? Or for just going out and having fun? Uh, you know, but I got to answer that question. What do I what do I want to do with my e-bike? And the next thing I need to ask myself is, where am I going to ride this bike at? Am I going to take it from home and ride it right out from here all the time? Do I have places to ride it here that fall in with what I want to do with my bike? Uh, or am I going to be loading it up and taking it to different places? I think question number three would be, what kind of surface am I going to ride on? Am I going to, am I going to be riding through fields like this? Am I going to be riding uh, uh, on pavement, on the streets, on the greenways, on gravel roads? Am I going to be riding on, let's see, which way do we want to take this? I think we might swing around here and take this on up. Uh, Am I going to be riding it on single track technical trails or through the rocks and, and rock gardens and things of that nature? So that would be my next question that I would have to ask uh, is what type of a surface I'm going to want to ride on. I guess the next one I need to ask is going to be how far do I want to go? And I'm going to tell you right now, you better plan on going farther than what you really think you're going to want to go. A lot of people they want to go about 10 miles and after just a few rides all of a sudden they're going 15 20 25 30 miles you know michelle was a perfect one at that uh, she used to never want to go more than about 10 or 11 miles and now if i design a route and it's less than 20 miles she's like what do you mean that's not worth loading up for so you want to you want to figure you're going to want to go further than what you think you're going to want to go. Uh, what would be the next thing I would ask is, oh, maybe you want to personalize this bike or, or modify it. You know, are, are you the kind of person that has to have the, the baddest bike on the block? <laughs> or are you pretty satisfied with, you know, stock whatever you have that would be the next question that i would have and then i guess as almost a part of that question that i would have to ask 
uh, do I have the ability to really modify it and how much ability do I have you know does that ability mean I can change the seat and put mirrors on it or does that ability mean I can build me an, a, an entire bike from frame up do I have the time to do that and do I have the tools and the equipment to do that kind of thing so that would be the other question that uh, you're going to want to make sure that you answer for yourself and once you've kind of started getting answers for all these things then we can well you know I guess there's one more major question coming into play here what kind of a budget am I willing to put into this you know not not what kind of a budget do I have but what kind of a budget am I willing to put into it so that's going to be a part of this as well now once I've answered them questions that doesn't come up with a that doesn't give you the answer of rad runner or you know trek cargo bike with the motor installed no there's still a lot of things you got to kind of look at and so with all the answers to that in mind let's take a look at some of the big differences you know there's probably thousands of different bikes out there right now e-bikes and from hundreds of manufacturers all kinds of different setups on them and so what's some of the differences well I'll tell you I think some of the big differences are the type of bike the uh, a fat tire bike a commuter bike or a mountain bike that seems to be the three categories that are kind of the, the most popular and by far the most popular right now is the fat tire bikes the beach cruisers uh, they are really really popular and so but there are some there are some pros and some cons to them you know they're fun to ride that fat tires gives you some extra suspension uh, they're they're great for stability when you're on like gravel roads like this right here you can't even tell you're on them and you're really stable so they're great for beginners uh, or somebody just coming back to cycling from uh, decades out you know that's one of the biggest markets for e-bikes right now is uh, uh, older generations that are coming back to cycling for something to do you know? but then there are some disadvantages to the fat tire bikes too they're heavy they're heavy to put on a rack they're really heavy if you have to pedal one home because the battery went dead on them especially these hub drives that have that heavy back wheel uh, so you know there's some disadvantages to them as well now you got your commuter bikes they're much lighter they're almost like a regular bike to pedal them uh, they're easier to put on a rack but they don't offer as much stability that's for sure and just between me and you they don't have that cool factor as much as some of them big fat tire bikes do you know I went by a, a school bus stop full of elementary kids one morning when I was out riding my fat tire bike and I heard one kid say man that bike is cool <laughs> you know you ain't going to get that on a city bike. <laughs> but all kidding aside, now your mountain bikes, they kind of come in right in between there. And uh, your, your true electric mountain bikes, they've got some disadvantages. They, I mean, they're right, going to be right in the middle. You can ride them just about anywhere. They're a very comfortable ride. What's some of the disadvantages? Well, your true uh, electric mountain bikes are are going to be expensive that's a, a big disadvantage right there if they're a true mountain bike uh, they're not going to have the top speed as much as some of these other ones do because they're built to help you get up the hills and then be on your own coming down the hills you know that they're they're built to help you get up them hills get over them rough spots and then be like a regular bike as much as they possibly can getting over some of these other spots so they're not going to be as fast
but that's your three different types of, of bikes there now what's the next thing I want to know well you know we've talked about how far do I want to go the power and the battery that you have in this 48 volts seems to be about one of the uh, most popular sizes right now but I've got a 36 volt um, my fat tire is 36 volt uh, and it works just fine matter of fact it's got about a top speed of about 25 or so 28 miles an hour I think I've had it up over 30 if I'm going down a slight hill and that's about the same as most of the uh, 48 volts have so but you do got a little bit more torque when you got a 48 volt your battery size is going to tell you how far you can go on a single battery uh, I've cleared that out some uh, your battery size is going to tell you how far you can go on a single single battery and the, the so you you know you might sit there and think well I want the biggest one I can get eh, maybe not necessarily because you're also adding a lot of weight your battery is probably the heaviest thing on the bike so you know you want to know how far you want to go and you want to get the correct size battery what's some other different thing well you got different types of bikes you've got a step over uh, like this bike here you've got a, a mid-step bike or you've got a step through your step through you can just step right through them uh, that's what we used to call the girls bikes the mid-step they're a little bit higher than that but you can still step through them and so that's the three different styles of bikes you, you want to have and and if you're going to be going to the grocery stores and stuff like that you probably need to have a step through because you're going to have a rack on the back of it you're going to have it filled up with some groceries you're not going to be able to swing a leg over it very easy so you know those are some things you want to really keep in mind what else we got folding bikes we didn't <laughs> didn't mention folding bikes I don't happen to have a folding bike but we got some friends that do and uh, you know if that question is I'm going to be taking this bike somewhere well now I got to figure out can I take it somewhere do I have a truck do I have a, a rack for a car you know I was talking to somebody on the internet and they said nobody would put a rack on their car even a category one rack uh, little <laughs> or hitch so that they could put a decent e-bike rack on their vehicle they couldn't do it so the only way that they could go anywhere with their bike and they didn't have a truck uh, the only way they could go anywhere was to buy a folding bike and that was an option that worked out pretty well for them and they you know enjoyed that but I never really thought of that a whole lot uh, but that's something that can be you know certainly taken into consideration depending on what your answers are what other kind of options do we have here well here's a big one as far as I'm concerned mid drive versus a hub motor and uh, I happen to love my mid drives but they're not for everybody I've I've really discovered you know I talked to Michelle about maybe getting one and I don't think she would enjoy it all that much some of the things about mid drives is, is you need to actually be shifting them and what I've started to notice is a lot of people just leave their bike in one gear and one gear only they're you know they they just they never you know I think I'll just take another loop around the field here just a nice leisure I don't want to get going too fast today because it's pretty cold and I didn't bring no gloves but uh, uh, they just want to keep their bike in one gear and so a hub drive is going to certainly be the best for that kind of thing right there on the flip side of that if if you live you know up in the hills in West Virginia or someplace where there's a lot of hills ah hub drive that's not going to do you nearly as much good as a mid drive is going to do you and so you're going to want to make sure you go ahead and get you know a uh, a mid drive if you're going to be planning on taking that onto a lot of uh, a, a lot of hills and things like that uh, category there you know you got three different categories of e-bikes uh, your category one e-bike is going to 
give you assistance up to 20 miles an hour and that's it and they're not going to have throttle I've, I've heard some controversy over this that maybe they do have throttle but it's only up to 20 miles an hour and but my understanding is a class one e-bike does not have a throttle and it's only good up to 20 miles an hour why in the world would you want that well i can tell you why some folks would want that is because it's good it's legal for competitions uh if you've been following my channel since the beginning you, you guys know i went up to the gncc mountain bike racing in uh, west virginia and that was a, something that i was involved with with the motorcycles for a long time they will only accept class one or category yeah class one e-bikes uh, nothing beyond that and i'll clue you don't think for one second it's a cheap b bike because <laughs> i can just about guarantee you them bikes cost more than anything we're looking at uh i'm talking like <laughs> up around the twelve thousand dollar mark for a good bike there so but then you got your class two e-bikes and they're going to be good up to 20 miles an hour and they do have a throttle on them that's a pretty common bike probably the most common that most people watching this channel are looking at is going to be the class three e-bikes and they're good up to 28 miles an hour and they do have a a throttle as well uh, what's some of the other options uh, well, I'm, I'm riding one right now do I want to buy a kit and put it on a bike that I already have or do I want to buy a ready-built e-bike uh, that's a that's actually a great question you know some folks have a bike an older bike do they have the ability and tools to go ahead and put a mid-drive kit on it? I'll clear you, that would be the absolute most economical way to get a well-built e-bike is to start out with a well-built bike and put a, a motor on it. Uh, but there are some issues with that. You better be pretty handy with it, and there are some things that you're going to have to adapt. You know, you don't just get it and look at the instructions and slap it together and, whoop, that's the end of it. We're done. Uh so you know that would that would be something that you would have to kind of ask yourself is it worthwhile doing and do you are you interested in doing that you know some people just don't have the time for something like that uh, how are you going to accessorize this pipe again you know do you have the time to be doing that do you have the desire to be even doing that uh, are you just going to be satisfied with it just the way it is and so what else we got i guess we got you know price range boy you're looking price range goes all the way from oh i think you could probably get some e-bikes at walmart for about four or five hundred dollars on up to Let's see about going down this way this time on up to like i say some of the like uh specialized or, or husqvarna e-bikes you know you're you're getting up into the over ten thousand dollar range for some of them uh bikes there so the, the price range you got to really look at what do you want to put into a project like this so you know but i i always remembered something my dad always told me he says i'm too broke to buy cheap <laughs> and what he meant by that was well he doesn't have money to waste on something so when he gets it he's going to make sure he's going to get what's going to be good enough for him and i guess that would be the words that i would leave you all for is get what's going to work well for you but put a little bit of research into it yeah, it looks like we might get some good mud crossing here. Nah, it's just that little little spot there. There ain't no real mud here. Uh, but that's what I would encourage y'all to do is, you know, get what you're going to want to have. And, uh, uh, but do the research so that when you get it, you know you got exactly what you want. 
that's how I would go about it there internet so I guess that's going to wrap it up for this video and I can tell you until the next time this is Southern e-biking saying hey stay safe God bless keep the wheels turning uh, don't forget like and subscribe and one more time we're out